Hello, my name is Dr. Adam Cloutier. I'm the Vice President of Academics at Glen Oaks Community College. It's my honor to give a brief overview of our data discovery as being part of the Strengthening Michigan, uh, Michigan Workforce Pathways Cohort. On behalf of my team, uh, we did take the time to take a look at all the data and, and we found a couple of things quite interesting. Some was not surprising, for example, being in South, Southwest Michigan, the majority of our, of our population is white. It's not a surprise. It's also not really a surprise that about 10% of our population is, is Hispanic. However, we were surprised when we were looking at the poverty rates. So comparing the poverty rates in Southwest Michigan to those at the state level, we saw that pretty much every population group, with the exception of Asian and Pacific Islander, was living in the poverty rate. And as you can see there with my second bullet, is that Hispanic and the, the Hispanic and Latino population are almost double what the state percentage is. Looking at the higher education data, uh, there was no surprise that the majority of our students are in the general studies um, uh, field or pursuing a general, general, dis, general studies degree. Our challenge for the next several years will be to better position students to, to get in that pathway that would make sense for their educational goals. Obviously, nursing, business, health professions, those are easy pathways for students to get into, but a student who's on the general studies pathway that might be studying computer information systems, we need to really get them from the general studies pathway into another. More data on that in just a minute. So speaking of computer information systems, we did we were able to look at the chart and we noticed that there was one program that uh, was very high on the list that uh, could be very, very positive or very good opportunity for our students. It is a program that requires a baccalaureate degree, but we've seen a very large increase in jobs um, since 2021 in this area with a, with a median salary of 76,674, which is quite a bit over the Michigan 2020 living, uh, living wage. Diving in a little bit deeper, just to show some charts, just to see where we got some of this information from. You can see the population on the left and the uh, service area below living wage on the right. Again, you see that we're predominantly white. Do have a good cohort of Hispanic and Latinos in our service area. And that on the right, everybody in our service area, with the exception of Asian slash Pacific Islanders, which is a very small portion of our population, is below the, uh, the state average for the living wage. Our summary is quite simple this, is that far too many people in our service area live in poverty, far too many. And therein lies the opportunity for us and that is to be in, the, be in the business that we're in, education. We need to educate our community of what we can do to help them be successful and, and really explore an area that, that could uh, bring them out of the poverty, poverty, uh, poverty range. So looking at the higher education insights, uh, again, we, we did not know exactly which um, population groups were in each degree, but we do see, again, the number of students or the population of our students who are in the general studies degree. We've got a lot of work to do there, some guided pathways work, but uh, we will get there. And again, we did see the software developers area with a very nice increase uh, for our labor market um, specific to the program that we're interested in. A number of key takeaways that, that we kind of would like to summarize. Uh, number one, again, almost every service area population group has a median household income that is less than the living wage. Number two, there's no surprise that health services careers continue, continue to grow. This was happening before the pandemic. It, it exploded during the pandemic, and it'll continue uh, well after. Again, there are far too many students on the general studies pathway. We're going we're gonna to improve on this. I know it'll take some time, but uh, I'm very happy to say that it's, it's already been started with, uh, with computer information systems. A few years back, we developed an, an AA in computer sciences degree led by Kevin Connor, and uh, we've already seen a number of students shift in the last few years from the general studies area into that pathway. And, path, and key takeaway number four is obviously we need to align pathways for high demand jobs. These are some of the high demand jobs with all of these salaries well above the, the uh, poverty level. And again, we've got to do a little bit of of education and that we need to, of course, not only just align pathways, but make them guaranteed pathways for our students. So going back to recap our goals, uh, which have changed a little bit since the very beginning, 
Um, obviously, number one, the data that we reviewed was, was fantastic data. We need to, number one, share this data. Uh, so we need to share this data with a number of different population groups. Number two, we need to market our computer information systems program uh, and our other programs so that way our students can really get into those pathways that will give them a median household income that's greater than the living wage. And the number three is obviously we need to continue to develop guaranteed transfer pathways. Transphase, tra uh, transfer pathways for attainment of a bachelor's degree and also attainment of a very high high paying job right after graduation from Glen Oaks Community College. Our next steps are pretty simple. Um, number one, <clears throat> we need to take a dive deep into the data to find out uh, you know, which, which population groups are in each program. We need to find out why are students taking our general studies degree. We need to better, better inform our community. And we need to partner more with those in our area that would help invest in, in their employees and in our community. And lastly, who needs to see this information? Pretty much everybody. Everybody needs to see this information. Uh, it's more so once you have the information, what are you going to do with it? But I think clearly we need to share this with our white and Hispanic, uh, uh, white and Hispanic slash Latino families in the area. We need to share this with uh, admissions, advising, and recruiting recruiters. We need to share this with our, our educational partners, our high school teachers, our guidance counselors, even our four-year transfer institutions. So that way we can better inform our students in our service industry of who we are, what we do, and how we can help them reach their goals. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me ramble. And uh, thank you very much so for the MCCA for this opportunity to be in this, in this cohort. Thank you so much.